Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm very happy to make a quicker return to the channel sooner than expected. I'm very excited to deliver to you all new content that I'll be making over the next few months and leading into the future. But in the meantime, I'll get to what we're up to this afternoon. I'm finally going to check out Air Canada's new business class on the A330. This has been updated for over a year now, and I can't wait to show it to you all. So, G, how you been? How you been, man? Good, Ooh, oh, you got Checking a bag is very straightforward and is done with no weights. At their security, there aren't too many good lounge options at this time of day. A lot of Air Canada's flights leave at 1 p.m. now, so it's very busy in the terminal during this time of day. There are two Plaza Premium lounges on the domestic side, one in the B Concourse, the WestJet side, and one in the C Concourse, the Air Canada side. The one here isn't very favorable despite the nice appearance. It isn't enclosed and it's literally right next to security so it can get a bit noisy when it's busy. For entry, it's $30, but since then, they've had an advertisement for about $20 now. Priority Pass is also accepted. And to be honest, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're having a bite or something to drink. If possible, I'd highly recommend you visit the one over at the B Concourse. It's a lot larger and nicer. The Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge isn't that much of a better option at this time right now. Is limited in capacity due to COVID restrictions and the lineup was pretty long to get in. But you know what, the flight left an hour so I decided to skip out on it altogether. Other than that mess, here's our plan today. This Air Canada A330-300. This specific aircraft is one of the X Singapore Air 330s and is fitted with a new and updated business class. Although this is the same business class seat found on Air Canada's 787 and 777, there are some subtle differences between the two. The seats are laid out in a 1 2 1 reverse herringbone configuration, which is becoming more common on the A330. Hi there, how are you? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Six case, same thing, cross over to the left. Great, thank you. Upon boarding, waiting at the seat was a bottle of water and bedding for the seat. Now, here's the updated seat. On your left, there's a retractable armrest that is now turned into a storage bin. Unfortunately, there's no more shoe storage. The old main storage bin just houses the remote now. There's now a new storage bin behind it that contains a headphone jack, USB-A and C outlets, and universal power outlet. This was actually a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. It was definitely big enough to accommodate my phone and other belongings. The same adjustable reading lamp is back. There's also a coat hook available and has been slightly updated. 
and unfortunately there are no individual air nozzles available. Lastly, there's a three-point seat belt now. The tray table is very large and sturdy, but is stored differently compared to the seats on the 787 and 777. This can also be retracted when you leave your seat while eating. Overhead bins have now been added over the center seats. Before, it had a very spacious feeling in the cabin with the old configuration, but these bins are small enough to where it still has somewhat of a roomy feeling. The seat controls have also had a new updated screen, but everything else remains the same. Noise cancelling headphones are also provided. And the literature rack is now situated on your right. For the seats in the center, there is now a divider available, which is a great new added feature. Now I'm very confident that every surface on this plane has been cleaned properly, but people like to put their shoes up on the footrest. It doesn't hurt to give it an extra wipe down. We pushed off the gate on time and started to taxi out to the runway. If the cabin pressure changes, an oxygen mask would drop to the panel above you. Remain seated to pull the mask towards you. Adjust the support straps to hold the mask over your mouth and nose and breathe normally. I would like to note that while we're taxiing, this seat is slightly smaller than the ones found on the 787 and Dreamliner. Here are two comparisons.
fast charging is supported in the USB-C port. There's also a gap in the storage bin lid so the cables can be fed through. Let's check out the IFE. The screen is smaller, but it's a bit closer to you now. This new IFE is extremely responsive, especially with the remote. If you feel like there's too many movies available, you can add everything you want to watch a later list. For a while now, ads are filled up right before the movie starts. And guess what? You can skip them now. The in-flight map is provided by Flight Path 3D and is very detailed in info. Lunch is provided on this flight with a limited amount of alcohol and soft drinks. A tuna and hard boiled egg appetizer, big screen salad, Texan style chicken dish with cornbread, cheese and cracker platter, and a Nanaimo bar was all served on one tray. I'm very happy porcelain plates have made a return, but plastic cutlery is still kicking around. You have to take my word for it, the Texas chicken actually tasted pretty good, but the tuna appetizer was a bit lacking in flavor. A solid and filling lunch overall. Cheers, buddy. Now it's time to check out the lavatory. It was cleaned well and presented with all the standard amenities. It's very similar to the lavatories found on the A350. Also, the lavatories in the back half of the cabin is a bit smaller. Clean Care Plus kits are handed out during boarding. Everything shown on here is in the kits. Wi-Fi is available at three different speeds. The pricing is very fair for the duration of the flight. After getting some work done, it was time to try out the bed and get a nap. With the smaller seat, bed space and length is not compromised and is still fairly long. After waking up after an hour, a bottle of water and snack bag was handed out. This Vicky's plain chips and dark chocolate was included. I honestly couldn't tell you what it was at the time, but this is genuinely the most relaxing flight I've had in a very long time, even pre-pandemic.
I'm really happy Air Canada could squeeze the Collins Aerospace Business Class seat into a 330 while still maintaining the 121 configuration. I'm also happy they added a divider between the center seats. Everything is looking modern and sleek after a much needed facelift. The old pods are great for their time, but feel very dated now. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. I, I gotta say, this is one of the most relaxing flights I've had in like, even pre-pandemic in a very long time. Okay, thank, thank you so much guys. I really, really appreciate it. Have a good night. Either than a slightly shoe scuffed up seat near the entrance and a minor issue with my seat that was quickly resolved with the crew, this was a really, really great flight. The overall comfort is leaning class and the passenger accommodation with the crew was top notch. If given the opportunity to fly this, I'd highly recommend it, even in economy. I really hope in the future when full service is restored, I get to fly this seat going transatlantic. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. See you all in the next video.